present picture shows a remarkably realistic and lucid view of Florence, captured by the English artist Thomas Patch from on top of the famous Ponte Vecchio. And you, if you walk over it today, you can imagine him sitting on top of one of those famous shops and possibly using a camera obscura. And what's amazing about this is just the sheer life in this picture. If you look at the wet bodice washwoman on the left down by the mud flats and the local Florentine quality in their tricorn hats and scarlet top coats going from one grand riverside residence to another. In fact, this is Patch's only such view. It's not the traditional touristic view of Florence you'd expect. And indeed, grand tourists very much were the thing back in Florence in the 18th century. One of these bigwigs, pun intended, in the boat might have asked Thomas Patch to take this particular view because of one of their palaces being in the background, such as the Palazzo Corsini, which you can see on the right. So these grand tourists who came down to Italy for its Roman ruins, Renaissance artworks, and indeed hostelries and brothels, found themselves denigrated back home as macaroni. This was partly obviously because of their Italian rarefied eating habits, but also their rather more liberated habits, shall we say. And Patch, as you can see here, abandoned his convention to become a fantastic landscapist, if you see how he articulates the scene with the light and shadow from one riverbank to another. Although this is perhaps not surprising for someone who trained in the studio of Claude Joseph Vernet, yet was chased from the French master's workshop in Rome with the Inquisition hot on his heels for alleged homosexual practices. But it wasn't all just gallivanting around. Patch was friends with Horace Walpole, who is the daring romantic author and also the son of the British Prime Minister. And at the time, the presence of Bonnie Prince Charlie, who was a rival claimant to the throne of Britain and also a man who'd led a bloody rebellion a few years previously, meant that the Holy See and the Papal States didn't have any diplomatic relations. And so actually, in a way, Tuscany was the last frontier. Patch himself, who didn't only do topographical views, but was a great Renaissance man who engraved the works of early Quattrocento masters like Giotto and his circle, his milieu, would have had important roles with, for example, the Grand Duke of Tuscany. If I show you a painting here by Johann Zoffany, a friend of Patch, you can see the Tribuna d'Orfizi, which is really the gilded, fabulous Wunderkammer of the Duke's collection. And if you look at Patch, he's got one hand here resting on Titian's Venus da Bino, and yet he's gesticulating at this rippling musculature of these two antique wrestlers. This is probably Zoffany's wry remark on Patch's uh, supposed sexual orientation, which I think Patch would have laughed at. If you look at this other engraving by Patch, it's a self-portrait of himself as a bull. Qui se humiliat exultabit her. He who humiliates himself should be exalted. And returning to this acutely observed view of the Riverano, although probably commissioned, as we said, by an aristocratic patron, to show the Riverside Palazzo. From the carriages trundling over the river, you get this real sense of Patch's interest and mastery of both the natural world and the minutiae of human life, which makes it such a remarkable and lively painting. Mm -hmm.